So the question then comes, how do I even treat this disease, right? My first goal is to make sure the patients are comfortable, right? We want to make sure that patients are healthy. They have some quality of life. We get rid of any symptoms that are troubling them, right? Um, the one thing that troubles most of our patients is the fact that they're swelling up, right? That's how we diagnose the disease. So we give them medications called diuretics. These are basically water pills, essentially, that get rid of extra salt in water from your body, right? And that will make people more comfortable. We also now have ACE inhibitors or ARBs. Um, it's a these are classes of medications that are blood pressure medications, but they also have another effect. They get rid of protein from the urine, right? So you basically have one medication helping with two different effects that are going on with membranous nephropathy. So we control the blood pressure with these medications. We also help control the protein in the urine with these medications. Now, one thing that I'd mentioned earlier is patients with membranous may have an increased risk for clotting, right? And we really worry about that because that, that clotting could be devastating and it can be life-altering. So what we try to do is sometimes in patients who are at high risk, give them medicines to thin out their blood. These medications are called anticoagulation medications, right? They, they thin out the blood, so the risk of clotting goes down. What can we do to stop it from flaring? or to get it into remission, right? Now, I'll take a step back with that to say membranous can be from a variety of reasons, right? There are two major classes of membranous nephropathy. One is called primary membranous nephropathy, which happens because the body is just angry and attacking the kidneys with these autoantibodies, right? Secondary membranous nephropathy occurs because there's some other cause, whether it's an infection, for example, hepatitis C or HIV, that's causing the kidney disease, or it's a medication like incense, ibuprofen class of medications, for example. Or it could be because there's an autoimmune process that's going on like lupus. And also one more important class that should be something that you remember are cancers. So lots of causes, and the treatment is really directed towards the cause. So if the cause is a medication, we take away the medication. If it's an infection, we treat the infection. If it's a cancer, we treat the cancer, right? So you want to treat whatever's causing membranous. But when it comes down to primary membranous, which doesn't really have a cause, something triggered it, and we don't really know what exactly triggered it, but it's happening because the body is attacking the kidney. In those cases, we can give medications which are like chemotherapy or rejection, anti-rejection therapies. Um, for example, cyclophosphamide with steroids, rituximab, or even things like tacrolimus or uh, cyclosporin. So all these complicated classes of medications that you would need to talk to your doctors about as to which one would be the right medication for you based on your other conditions. 